Father, we thank you. First off, we thank you for Jesus. God, just for the very reason that we're able to stand before you, as we read last week, God, holy and blameless and without a single fault. And we thank you, Father, for forgiving us and for looking on us in love. And we thank you this morning, God, that we can come and worship you. And we pray that as we sing, and as we brought these songs before you, God, that you were honored and you were glorified. And we ask this morning that as we hear your words spoken to us, that you would just speak to our hearts. God, do what you need to do in us. God, let us be changed by your Holy Spirit this morning. God, we love you. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. Would you guys grab a seat this morning? You guys welcome Brother Kyle this morning. First of all, I would like to say thank you, Jesus. And I'll say, I, was, I also want to say good morning to everybody. How are you all doing? Good to see you. I got nervous already. <laughs> Please don't stare me at so hard, okay? Well, um, last week, I forgot my key after the service. You know, I went out to the parking lot, I forgot my key, and then I came back. I saw Pastor Lee talk to Kenny Smith on the hallway and with some other guy. And then I pour, I, you know, I touched Pastor Lee and he turned around, Mr. Carl. I said, uh-oh, am I getting in trouble? And then he said, you preach next Sunday. Are you kidding me? I, in my head, you know, I said, you kidding me? I did, I forgot that he told me two weeks ago that I supposed to preach this Sunday. Otherwise, today, you will, we will worship without a pastor, without a preacher. Maybe that's better. But anyway, uh, thank you, Lord, and uh, all, uh, thank you so very much for everybody being here. And thank you for uh, Jesus uh, lead us here today. And thank, thank you for, for Pastor Lee giving me an opportunity and a chance to be able to stand before God and before you guys. Uh, so we just let uh, open the word of prayer, please, together. Our Father, Lord, thank you so much, Father God. We just want to honor you and give you praise and glory for everything that you have done. Father, bless your children in this very room. Give them the peace and joy. Keep them strong in you, Lord. Teach us and lead us and guide us. Forgive me and forgive each one of us. I just want to get out your way. You speak, Father. And we're asking you all this, Lord, in your son Jesus' name. Amen. As you guys see already, rejection boy. You can take that boy off. You can put it yourself. Rejection A, B, C, D, or whatever it is. I just want to bring this message. Uh, last Sunday, I was reading the Bible after church around 7.30 with my grandson, Jaden and Gary, John chapter 14. And uh, after we read and we pray, I asked my grandson, Jaden, I say, what do you want me to teach uh, next Sunday? And then he turned around and said, Tata, that means grandfather. Tata, what about David Goliath? I said, wow, Lord, is that your message you, wanna, you want me to share your, with your children, with your people? Here we go. We're going to read uh, 1 Samuel chapter 17. But first of all, I would like to share my testimony to those people that knew here today. I know some of you know already about my testimony. So I think you're going to have to listen again. So bear with me, please. I was born and raised in Cambodia, as you see already. I was born and raised in Cambodia. And in Cambodia, there was a war going on in Cambodia. There was a Khmer Rouge. Khmer Rouge is meaning those group of people, officers that, that have mindset of communism. They slaughter about three and a half million of Cambodia. So they slaughter of my my uncles, my aunts, my cousins. When I was nine years old, they tied me to the tree. 
and they lined my uncles, my, my, my aunts, my cousin. They're looking for my daddy because my daddy flee uh, into the mountain for life. That's the only way he escaped. But I just, want, I just don't want to talk too long, but I just want to share you my testimony a little bit that I was beating and they execute all my family. They blow my uncle's head, my, my aunt's head, and my cousin's head. And then they take a bamboo and they hit both of my chins. And they take a, a, a knife, they call a bayonet in front of the gun, and they slash me from here to here. I still have the scarf to this day. That when I was nine years old. So all my family was dead in front of me. That's why I, I asked the Lord, what do you want me to bring? And say, rejection, boy. And after that, <sighs> excuse me. After that, my daddy come pick me up from that tree and he, we ran for life through Thailand border. And you know, I just want to share you a little bit that uh, my daddy had no water, no food to eat. The reason why I survived today because of the mercy of Christ, because of the blood of Jesus Christ. My daddy pee in his hand. He pee in his hand like this for me to drink. Because we have no water, we have no food. We just try to survive that time. Okay, that's the life in Cambodia. So God brought me to the United States when I was 15 years old. When I was 15 years old, I have no English. I cannot speak English at all. Like my daughter, my youngest daughter, uh, Divari, said, Daddy, whenever you go teach and preach, make sure you finish your subject. That's rejection already. And my, uh, my middle daughter, Devona, she told me yesterday, Daddy, whenever you go up there and preach, please don't tell them that you cannot speak English. That's another rejection already. I feel rejection. Thank you, daughters. May God bless you guys. But anyway, I came to the United States when I was 15. They throw me in high school, past school, high school over there by university, uh, by TCU, uh, Barry and Hamfield Street. When I was 15, I have no English. They put me in high school. Every time I went to the class, I just want to make the long story short. I don't have much time. I only have one hour. That's what Pastor Lee gave me. So every time I went to the class, scientific class, English class, there's a football player. There's a whole bunch of people making fun of me. They call me names. They making fun of me. They say, I'm not belong here in the United States. Go back to your country. That's rejection already. That's how I feel. I put that title is a rejection boy. But God has some other plan for me. And God has plan and purpose for everybody here. It doesn't matter people rejected you. It doesn't matter other people reject you. It doesn't matter nobody count you in. It doesn't matter or whatever they do uh, talk to you. It doesn't matter whatever they done to you. But just remember one thing. God has a plan for you. God has a purpose and will for everybody's life. All you have to do is just put your trust in Jesus and have faith in Jesus Christ. He is a merciful and loving God. And that's what he done to me. Well, I just want to go back a little bit. I forgot. When I was six, seven years old, I was crawling on the table looking for food to eat. There are a whole bunch of rich kids. They, uh, they take a chair and they sit on my finger. And my fingers uh, mess it up until to this day. Just looking for bones to eat back in Cambodia. Okay? That's, when I, that's what happened to me. Uh, that's called rejection. But God has another plan and purpose for my life. He brought me here and he saved my life here. And when I... When I was Cambodia, when they put me in a camp, in a camp, all nothing but boys from six, seven, eight, and nine years old, nothing but boys. They make us work every day. 
if we don't finish our work, they don't give us food to eat. But, and they separate every group, 12 boys or 10 boys or 15 boys in a group. And every time the uh, people bring lunch, I'm in uh, one group with 12 people. When they put a bowl of rice soup like this, when they put down all those big boys, strong boys, they got a big spoon, so they take all the soup. So I'm the last one, I, I try to take my spoon in there, and this one big boy, he take the spoon and crack my skull right here. That when I was nine years old. That's called rejection. I'm not here to tell you about myself or bragging myself or whining about myself. I just want to share my testimony. That rejection is going on in this world. Rejection is happening right now. Whether you want to say it or not, but rejection, everybody gone through that rejection, maybe going through that rejection right now, maybe through friends, through our loved one, maybe through spouses, maybe through children, maybe through parents. Rejection is not a good thing that happened in life. It will damage soul, it will damage person, it will hurt person, it will kill that person. So many times when I was in high school, every time I went to the class, as soon as before I went to the class, I know people are going to make fun of me. They call me Ching Chung Chang. They, they do their eye like this. You from China, you go back to your country. They call me all kinds of names. My, my Cambodian name is Vutti. But every time I go to Cambodia, excuse me, all those young children, instead of they call me Vutti, they call me Buri. Buri. Every single time, every single day. That was hurt. I cry every single day. I say, Mom, Dad, I don't want to go back to that school again. But through the mercy of God, through the grace of Christ Jesus, the cross, salvation, he brought me here today because of that grace and mercy of Christ Jesus. Look at him. He died on the cross for us. Rejection is not good. So what we do? Before we read this, I would like to read the Bible of Isaiah chapter 53. I don't want to talk about myself too much, but I want to talk about the king of the king, the one that left heaven, the one that born in this world, that God sent his own beloved son, born into this world to save every human race, every person. And he got rejects, he got despised. He done nothing wrong to each one of us, but yet he got despised, he got rejected by man, by his own, by his people, by his nation. Let's read our, our book of Isaiah, chapter 53, real quick, please. I'm going to read verse 1 through verse 3. Who has believed our message? To whom has the Lord revealed his power arm? Verse 2, my servant grew up in the Lord's presence like a, a tender green shoot, like a root in the dry ground. There was nothing beautiful or majestic about his appearance, nothing to attract us to him. Verse 3, he was despised and rejected a man of sorrow, acquainted with deep past grief. We turned our backs on him and looked the other way. He was despised, and we did not care. Even Jesus, despised, rejects by us, by men, by his own family, by his own nation. He's the one that came and created everything. But yet, people despise him. Well, I have a lot of person that I want to talk about. I have a lot of person in the Bible that really admire me, that really encourage me. 
but I want to pick David today. I want to, I want to introduce you. I want to uh, uh, want you and I to read this First uh, Samuel chapter 17 together. It's really encouraged me. I wrote a note over here. It's two page. I guess I'm not going to be able to read because my time is short. And if I keep reading my note, maybe I'm not finished the, the message. But I'm going to tell you the stories a little bit. I'm going to paint the picture. In chapter 16, God instructs, God directs prophets Samuel to go to Jesse's house. Jesse has eight sons. And God told Samuel, there's going to be a king of Israel come out of Jesse's house. So when Samuel went over there and talked to Jesse uh, in chapter 16, he brought all the boys, the first boy. He tried to pour the oil. The oil didn't come out. The second boy, the oil did not come out. Tried to know another boy. All four, five, six, seven. Nothing come out. And then Samuel, is there another boy in your house? And Samuel said, I mean, David said, I mean, Jesse said, you mean the shepherd boy David? He said, yes. As soon as David came in, Prophet Samuel poured that oil and it came out. See, David was rejected by his daddy. Samuel, he was rejected by his own daddy. Just remember, brother and sister, if you got rejects by your loved one, by your friend, by other people, just remember that God has something special for you. God has some wonderful, wonderful thing for you. It's coming. It's just because you got rejected by friend. It doesn't matter what you do. It doesn't matter where you go. People will reject you. People will reject you. In spite of that, just remember, when you got rejected, remember our King Jesus, he got despised and he got rejected by men. So we have hope, we cry, we will have peace, we will have joy, we will have strength through the mercy and grace of Jesus Christ. Don't give up. Rejects, that is a sign, that's indicator that God has something special for you and for me and for every one of us. Don't give up. People can reject you. Jesus Christ never reject you. Spouse can reject you. God never reject you. Children can walk away from you, but God never reject you. God will stay with you. God will walk with you. Don't give up. Don't lose hope. He, David, not only rejected by his father, he got rejected by his own brother. One day, David, I mean, Jesse told David, boy, take that lunch. This day, talking about hamburger, maybe Burger King or uh, McDonald's in Cambodia, maybe rice and fish soup. His daddy told David, why don't you take the food to your brother in the battlefield? So, David is a little, a little boy, skinny boy. And he took his lunch. He, he took that lunch and he took that uh, bread and he just took it to the battlefield. And when da David got there, there was a Goliath, Goliath soldier and Israel soldier on one side and, and Goliath soldier on one side. They are about to battle. They are about to fight. They are about to go down. And when he go over there, he asked all his friends and he asked all his brothers, say, what's going on over here? What's going on over here? The Goliath going days and days, weeks and weeks. Goliath command, bring your soldier and fight with me. And everybody hiding. 
Everybody hiding. They were, nobody wanted to fight with Goliath. Goliath is nine foot tall in the Bible. See, in your life, in my life, we have a Goliath in our life. That Goliath could be your children walk out of your family. That Goliath, maybe your children abandon you. That Goliath could be cancer. That Goliath could be Somebody gossip about you. That lie could be your rejection by loved one, by friend, by your brother, by your sister. See, David gone through that. All his brothers say, get out of here. You're just a little boy. You don't have experience like us. We are soldiers. And somebody told David, I'm just telling the story, okay? Somebody told David, David asked him, what's going on? They said, you see that Kali over there, nine foot tall? And the king said, if anybody can go out there and fight with the Kali, he will offer to marry his daughter. And we'll charge you no tax. And they would say, what did the king offer? See, the that motivated David. See, that David got rejected by his brother. I'm going to read verse 20 to 28. So David left the ship with another shepherd and set out early the next morning with the gift as Jesse directed him. He arrived at the camp just as the Israelite army was leaving toward the battlefield with shout and, and battle cries. Soon the Israelites and Philistine force stood facing each other, army against army. David left his thing with the keepers and supplier and hurried out to the ranks to greet his brothers. As he was walking with them, Goliath, the Philistine champion uh, from Gath, came out from the Philistine ranks. Then David heard him shout, his usual taunted to the army of Israel, as soon as the Israelites' army saw him, they began, they began to run away in fright. Have you seen the giant? The man asked. He come out each day to defy Israel. The king has offered a huge reward to anyone who kills him. He will give that man one of his daughters for a wife. The man's entire family will be exempted from the paying tax. David asked the soldier standing nearby, what will a man get for killing this Philistine and ending his defiance of Israel? Who is this pagan Palestine anyway that he is allowed to defy the armies of the living God? And these men are gave David the same reply. They say, yes, that is the reward for killing him. Look at verse 28, very important. But when David's oldest brother, Eli, heard Eliab, heard David talking to men, he was angry. What are you going to do around here anyway? He demanded. What about those few sheep? You are supposed to be taken care of. I know about your pride and, this, uh, and deceit. You just want to see the battle. You see, David got rejected by his own family. He got rejected by his own daddy. He got rejected by his own brothers. You know, when I was a boy, I got rejected by this communist soldier that killed my family. When I came to the United States, I got rejects in high school. And when I go play volleyball, they got a whole group. They pick everybody except me. I just stand over there. Nobody pick me. I got rejects. But remember, brother and sister, whenever you got rejects, that is the sign. That is the indicator that God has a special and wonderful plan and wonderful thing ready to come in your way. 
Don't give up. Stay there and stand strong and trust in the name, trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. He died on the cross for each one of us. He died on the cross for our sin. He died on the cross so that we can have that salvation. God loved you. God loved me. It doesn't matter the world reject you. It doesn't matter a family reject you. It doesn't matter the spouse reject you. It doesn't matter kid reject you. It doesn't matter friend reject you. It doesn't matter who reject you. God will not reject you. God have a divine plan. God desire and he loves you and he care for you and he made you just the way you are. He has special thing for you. Don't give up, brother and sister. He not only despise, he not only reject my father, he not only rejects my brother, he always reject by his employer. He reject by his boss. I know there's a lot of good employer here. There's a lot of good boss in this weary room right here. Okay? And I know not everybody, everybody is bad. But if you do everything right, they not promote you. If you do everything right at work and your co-workers still gossip about you, talk about you, uh, slander about you, don't give up. That's a sign. That's a significant that God has something special for you in the way and is coming. Jesus Christ is alive. King Jesus went through rejection. So you don't have to go through that. You don't have to stay there. Rejection meaning God has something special for you. I wish I would have known then like I know now. I wish I wish I'd known them when they killed all my, my family and when they sliced me with bayonet, when they beat me with a, a bamboo, when, they, uh, when the boy sit me on my finger, when the boy take a spoon and, and crack my skull. I wish I would have known them like I know now. God has something special for me and for each and every one of you. You don't have to fit in. You don't have to fit in. If Jesus is all you have, that is sufficient enough. Life here is hard. Life here is tough. Life here is too short. I'm not going to say life is easy. You go to my family right now. You go to my house right now. You don't want to hear it. You don't want to see it. Life is not easy. But at the end of the day, Christ Jesus is the only one that provides us peace, that provides us love, that provides us joy, provides us hope, provides us strength. He keeps us strong, and he never abandoned you. He never abandoned me. So live for him. Don't give up at all. Jesus Christ is alive. Jesus Christ is risen. He is here. We have the word of God that is valuable, that is powerful, can change life, and can change people, can change heart. If you got rejected, if you've been rejected, don't let that rejection take control over you. Cast it to Jesus. Let him take care of you and come forward to Jesus. He loved you. You are here today. It's not by an accident. You born into, uh, into this world. It's not by accident. You were born here by God. By the image of God. God loved you. God loved me. God loved the whole world. All you have to do, if you want to have the assurance, if you want to know the assurance of your life, Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. We cannot buy salvation to heaven. There is nothing in this world that can buy heaven. Only through the blood, only through the cross of Jesus Christ. Look at him. He part the sea so can Israel walk freely. Look at him. He calmed the sea. How he calmed the storm so everybody can be have peace and joy. Look at him, Jesus Christ. He healed the blind man. He stopped blood that uh, that woman had 12-year uh, bleeding. He stopped. 
And that same power that Jesus has 2,000 years ago, he can have the same power, can change you, can change, can help you, and he can restore you, he can give you the strength, he can make you become a new man, a new woman again. God loves you. God loves you. God loves me. God loves you. God loves me. Last Sunday, I called my cousin in Kansas. Cause I know it's July the 4th. I said, brother, I'm going to be preached to, uh, the next Sunday, and then I'm going to leave to Cambodia with my wife uh, on Wednesday. Would you guys come and listen to the word of God? <laughs> my cousin, are you kidding me? Are you going to preach to the smart people, to the lawyer, to the engineer, to the education people? Man, you don't know what they're going to do. They're going to write you a book, man. They're going to put you on Facebook. Oh, to hear that, I say, man, that rejection. To hear that, I, I'm down already. Not he only reject me, not coming to, uh, uh, to visit me, uh, you know, like we used to. He did not encourage me. That's rejection. I called my brother, uh, my, my friend, I, just like my brother. He lives in Austin. I say, hey, brother, so-and-so. We used to go to school, high school together. I say, hey, I'm going to be preached next Sunday. Would you come and listen to the word of God? And then me and my wife, we're going to leave to Cambodia next Wednesday. Man, are you kidding me? I know you. You can't even speak English, man. You barely speak English. Every time you go put up application, you always ask for my help. You always say, what is this? What is that? What is this? How are you going to stand in front of the smart people, wise people, engineer, uh, businessman, lawyer, and all that? I say, oh, man, that's another rejection last Sunday. But thanks to the word of God. The world reject you. The world reject me. Don't stay there, brother and sister. If God can change my life, that same God, Jesus Christ, the blood of Jesus Christ, can do the same thing for you and for me. For you and for me. Please, I'm going to go over time, maybe two, three minutes, if you don't mind. I know, don't write me a book, or don't put me on Facebook, please. Thank you for your kindness, thank you for your love. But the message today is about rejection. Please. Sorry. Hello? 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 Never mind. I'm coming back to my place. I'm sweat already, guys. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for bearing with me. Thank you for being kind, so generous to me. Even though I speak broken English, I know you guys quiet. Why you guys quiet? Because you try to listen, try to understand every word I'm trying to say. Because like my daughter say, Daddy, don't repeat the same thing. Uh, but anyway, rejection boy. You can take that boy out. And you can put yourself in there. Put yourself in that shoes. Have you been rejected before in your life? Have you been rejected by spouse? Have you been rejected by friend? Have you been rejected by daddy? I know there's a good daddy. There's a good mom out there loving the kids. Have you been rejected by your own kids? Have you been abandoned by friend left alone? Have you re been rejected by your loved one? I just want to encourage you, brother and sister. I've been rejected time after time, but cannot compare to Jesus Christ. He was despised, but yet God has a special plan and purpose for my life. And the same special thing that's going to happen to you, he has that coming in your way. All you have to do, if you not already know Jesus Christ, I would bow you, I would bow in my knees. I would bow before you guys. Please receive this Jesus Christ. I was born and raised in Cambodia. Believe nothing but Buddha. Believe nothing but the stone I can touch. I believe nothing but the wood that made by man. I can touch that wood, that stone. That's not a real God. 
Jesus Christ is the true and living God. And he died for you and he died for me. So don't gamble your life. Today is the day. I would like to invite you to come to, to God, to Jesus Christ. He loves you. He wants to redeem you. He wants to take that rejection away. He wants to heal your wounding heart. He wants to give you the peace. He wants to restore your heart. He wants to give you that joy. He wants to give you that hope. He wants to keep you strong and keep going. The, so many times that I want to commit suicide. So many times I want to commit suicide because I got rejected at home in Cambodia. I got rejected here in high school. I got rejected at workplace. Everywhere I go, I got rejected. Well, you must be do something wrong. You must do something bad. I'm not saying I'm perfect. You do everything when people don't like you. They're going to reject you. But God, Jesus Christ, he loves you, Jesus Christ. He has the plan. He has the purpose. He has the he have wonderful plan and purpose for each and every one of you. So please don't give up and continue to trust Jesus. Don't stop believing Jesus. Continue to cling on to him and call on him. Spend the time with the Bible. Spend time in prayer. And don't give up your family. Don't give up your spouse. Don't give up your children. Don't give up the sake of Christ. Don't give up each other. Please support one another. God never rejects us. God has a plan and purpose for our life. He loves you. He loves me. He loves you and he loves me. No matter who you are, he loves you, he loves me. The reason why me and my wife stand here, my family stand here, because the grace of mercy Christ. Because the reason why me and my wife have an opportunity and a chance to go back to Cambodia to work and to serve him because of the grace of mercy of Jesus Christ, because through the body right here, the support, that invest, everything, there are so many Cambodian life and soul has been saved over there back at home as we speak right now. Rejection is indication that God has something special for each and every one of you because you are created by the image of God. You create by purpose and plan, and he loves you. Please don't give up. Thank you so much. Our Father God, Lord, thank you, Lord. Thank you for your word. Thank you for loving on us. The world rejects us, but you always say, come to me, those who are weary. Don't let your heart be troubled. If you believe in God, also believe in me. I go prepare the place. If I go prepare the place, I come back and receive you. I never abandon you or forsake you like an orphan. I am the same God today, yesterday, and tomorrow. I'm still the same. King Jesus is the Lord of King and the Lord of God, and he's almighty, powerful, and he's risen, and he's alive today in everybody. Lord, I pray that you bless your children here and keep them strong and guide them and protect them and provide for them as they go back home. Please save them. For those that need the salvation, please, please get your pastor here. A lot of pastor here, a lot of leader here, a lot of deacon here can help you. Please don't wait until tomorrow, today. Today, come to him right now. We have people right here can pray for you. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Thank you, guys.